Good morning. morning. And welcome and blessings on this day of Pentecost. Um, And also a day which we express our great gratitude um, for Donna and uh, Michael Gerhardt and their family as this is their last regular Sunday with us um, before they uh, make their move to Pennsylvania. So, um, so thank you all for joining us for this. And I just want to say that there is a very special coffee hour in Carroll Hall following the service. Um, there is a beautiful journal to write your notes um, to Michael and Donna and their family. So please be sure to sign that, look for that as well. Um, but again, hope you can, can join us in Carroll Hall for a very special coffee hour following. Um, and thanks to our youth who are assisting with leading worship today. And we do have childcare available in classroom five for our pre-K and younger children. Um, And just a a few announcements on Sunday, June 9th. Please save the date. That will be our Youth Recognition Sunday and our Parish Potluck Picnic. We will be providing hamburgers and hot dogs, but we um, invite everyone to bring either side dishes or salads, chips, desserts, beverages. Um, Also, we will need help with cleanup um, and setup for that. And you can see Mary Kearney for that. Um, Along with Youth Recognition Sunday, we ask that you please send your graduates photo and information to TAMBA to be included in a special visual for our graduates for that service and for the e-news. And this includes all graduates, uh, those graduating from kindergarten, middle school, elementary school, university, uh, grad school, so please, um, we we invite all of those. And um, today, you are also invited to stop by the Friends of the Hackensack River Greenway. Um, They have a booth today for Earth Fest, which is sponsored by Riverkeeper, and that's at Overpeck Park from noon to five. And if you have any questions, you can see Michael Acredino about that. Um, but you're invited to that as well. Um, And just also um, thank you for continuing to keep Father Jim and Marie in your prayers. Um, Father Jim's recovery is moving forward. He's just had a few bumps along the way. Um, So please continue to keep them in your prayers. Your prayers are most appreciated by Father Jim and Marie. Um, And also, um, just please keep um, Tamba Steve and Bryce Johnson in your prayers. They they are doing okay, Um, but at the end of the week, they did have um, a fire at at their house. Um, They're they're okay, but just keep them in your prayers. And if um, I have asked Tamba if there's any way that um, we can help them in any way, just to let us know. Um, So I just want to pass that along to you as well. Um, And a reminder about communion, all are welcome to receive communion. Um, If you would like to receive the wine, we just ask that you drink directly from the chalice or reverently touch the base of the chalice. We are just not dipping the host into the wine at this time, but all are welcome to come forward to receive communion. And then if you would like to continue on for healing prayer, Um, We are offering healing prayer today as well. Um, So all are welcome for that. And um, now let us stand for our opening hymn.
is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force, no one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks, and they started speaking in a number of different languages, as the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem, just then devout pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the sound, they came on the run. Then when they heard, one after another, their own mother tongues being spoken, they were thunderstruck. 
they couldn't reach for they couldn't for the life of them figure out what was going on and kept saying aren't these all Galileans how come we're hearing them talk in our various mother tongues Parthians Medans Elamites visitors from the Mesopotamia Judea Cappadocia Pontus and Asia Phrygia and Pamphylia Egypt and all parts of Libya belong to the Syrian immigrants from Rome both Jews and proselytes, even Cretans and Arabs. They're speaking our language. Describe God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head or tail of any of it. They talked back and forth, confused. What's going on here? Others joke. They're drunk on cheap wine. That's when Peter stood up and backed by the other 11, spoke out with bold urgencies. Fellow Jews, all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen, care listen carefully and get this story straight. These people aren't drunk, as some of you suspect. They haven't had time to get drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy, also your daughters. Your young men will see vision. Your old men dream dreams. When the time comes, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both and they'll prophesy. I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billowing smoke, the sun turned black and the moon blood red before the day of the Lord arrives and the day tremendous and marvelous and whoever calls out for help to me, God, will be saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. O oh Lord, how many fold are your works? Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number. Creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there's that liveth in. That you have made those four All of them look to you. To give it the living food in season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand and they are filled with good things. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and makes so. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. 
Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful people and kindle in us the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit and they shall be created and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So as we know, we are celebrating this morning the feast of what? Pentecost. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. And so many times when we have a hard time describing or explaining something, when we really want others to know just how important or extraordinary something is. We say things like, wow, I felt like I was on cloud nine. Or I was so excited, I felt like I was going to burst. Or her eyes shone like diamonds. In our first story this morning from the Acts of the Apostles, the author was trying to explain the powerful experience of the coming of the Holy Spirit to Jesus' disciples. And they write, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a strong wind, a gale force, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And then, like wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread among them. And throughout the stories in the Bible, we hear how the Holy Spirit comes and how people experience it differently. I think most of us here have probably experienced the Holy Spirit more along the lines of the prophet Elijah. At least I have. Not necessarily in a mighty wind or earthquake or fire, but in the whisper of a gentle breeze. And this morning, I share with you the story of the old man and the old woman and the white balloon. So there was once a gentle young man who fell in love with a strong young woman and they got married. And over the years, their family grew and grew and grew and they celebrated together many birthdays and anniversaries. Well, after all those many years, he became a gentle old man and she became a strong old woman. Yes, and their many children grew up 
and moved away. And then the old man became very sick. And all of the doctors that they saw eventually said that they were not sure if there was anything further that they could help, they could do to help the old man get any better. And so the old man and the old woman became very scared and very worried. And even though they went to church and believed in God and in heaven, they still had many questions about what would happen here. Well, one of the daughters of the old man and the old woman who was feeling a bit too far away after hearing this news, she sent beautiful flowers to the old man and the old woman with some helium balloons attached to the bouquet. Thank you. And late one night, a few days after the bouquet had arrived, the one white balloon with silver stars slipped out of the bouquet. And the old man and the old woman were fast asleep upstairs. And the house was dark and quiet. And the bouquet was in their living room. And the white balloon with the silver stars snaked its way from their dining room through a doorway and into their front room and up a twisting stair stairway up to the second floor, which had three bedroom doorways and one bathroom doorway. And forever, the old man and the old woman had slept with their door almost closed only open about three or four inches. Nevertheless, the white balloon with the silver stars entered their bedroom. And as it entered, their mere presence of it coming into their room woke each of them up and neither one of them said a thing. They just lay there in silence and watched that balloon slowly float across them as they lay in their bed. And then ever so gently, the white balloon sank to the floor and lay right next to them. And they both knew that this was from God. This was from the Holy Spirit, reminding them that God was with them, that God would be with them through whatever the coming days, weeks, or months would bring. And when they called their children and grandchildren and friends the next morning to tell them what had happened, they all knew too. This was a reminder to all of them that God is always with us, especially when we are going through difficult times like when Jesus' disciples were feeling quite alone and not sure what to do after Jesus had returned to his father. And like when the old man and the old woman were afraid of what would happen if the old man got sicker and sicker. Well, 
the old man did get sicker and sicker. And a few months later, he did die. But throughout those days and months, everyone remembered the white balloon and remember that just as Jesus had told his disciples that he would ask his father to send the Holy Spirit to be with them forever, the father sends the Holy Spirit to be with us. So for me, the Holy Spirit and the presence of God can come with a sound like the rush of a violent wind or in tongues as a fire. But for me, especially with the white balloon with silver stars, reminding my parents of the Holy Spirit's presence with them in their darkness, that they were not alone, no matter what would come their way, that we are not alone, no matter what will come our way. The Holy Spirit comes to us in many different ways. It is important for us to share our stories, to remind each other that God is indeed with us. Amen. Amen. Jasmine, can I give you this? Let us stand and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Spirit of God aids us in our weakness and teaches us to pray. In the power of the Spirit, let us offer prayers to God for the needs, concerns, and hopes of all the world. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the holy churches of God, and for the unity of all, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For this gathering and for those who enter with faith, reverence, and fear of God, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We give thanks for the lives and ministries of those celebrating birthdays this week, remembering Nickerson, Marie, Jose, Cooper, Mark, Jordan, Amanda, and Karen, and those celebrating anniversaries, Dwight and Chisako, and Tamba and Stephen. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our presiding Bishop Michael, our Bishop Carly, and our priests Joan and Jim and Michael, our celebrant. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For the light of justice among all peoples, we pray for those in war-torn areas of our world. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For this parish community of St. Mark's, that we may grow in holiness. For ourselves, our families, and those we love. For the leaders of nations, and for all who seek peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For all those in danger and need, the sick and the suffering, the hungry, homeless, and the oppressed. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. For those who have fallen asleep in Christ and for all the departed, especially Sir Belanwu Henry Equimi, father of J. Equimi. We pray also for the hundreds of individuals who lost their lives in our country this past week because of the senseless use of guns. Tosha M. Williams, Cleveland, Ohio. Andrea Glaze, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Africa A. Woods McGill, Tiffany K. Mohorder, and Venus M. Hart, Las Vegas, Nevada. Jameer James, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Tremaine Nicholson, Washington, D.C. Deontay Tate, Erie, Pennsylvania. Elizabeth Beasley, Rockford, Illinois. Jonathan T. Howard, Natchez, Louisiana, Lance Little, Indianapolis, Indiana, Teresa Houston, Houston, Texas, Roderick D. Gilmore, Jr., Greenwood, Mississippi, and Timothy Davenport, Wagoner, South Carolina. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Dear people of God, what else or whom else should we pray for? All of those living in the midst of violence, the people of Gaza and the Middle East, for Haiti, for Ukraine, for Sudan. All who are grieving. God, we come to you plagued with an agonized grief after yet one more outbreak of senseless gun violence. We represent one voice, the voice of bitter weeping echoing throughout our cities and resounding in communities throughout the world. We are Rachel, mourning with wordless sobs, the lives of those sacrificed on the altar of violence. We are Rachel, perplexed with troubled souls, seeking to understand what would cause humans to inflict pain on the fellow brothers and sisters. We are Rachel, exasperated, grasping, crying out, how long, O God? How long will this wave of violence consume your people? We pray for an end. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, for you transform our lives and make us new. Hear the prayers which we offer in confidence and breathe upon us with your Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. All right, you need to do a lot of peace, Michael. You did good, by the way. Oh, thank you. All right, you need you got to do it. You're, you're correct. Yes, you need to do that. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through your dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come your, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins, sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Against us. Save, save us from the time, time of trial, trial and deliver and us from evil. evil. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory, glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Alleluia.
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Hallelujah. Oh, there it is. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Okay, you wanna, that's you stay up, you did. You want to stay up here and do the choir and then go down or you want to go straight down?
Sure. Please stand. In the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you may go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We are made of one body because we all share one bread and one cup. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God. Sacrament of his body and blood. Send us down to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. I was told to ask you to please be seated. I have no idea why. <laughs> Well Are you done. coming down well here? Well done, <laughs> yes. Okay. Well done. done. Um, She's been crying all week. Just so, <laughs> so I would also invite um, our wardens and our um, treasurer. Oh, why well, look? <laughs> God. This is totally unrehearsed. I know. <laughs> <laughs> she always works that way. Oh. I'll get you one way or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, So. You're coming apart. Dress me again. <laughs> yeah, excuse, excuse us. <laughs> Um, yeah, j just so everyone can see you. Um, so, Donna, Father Michael, um, I'm just going to keep going just through talk. this. Yes, um, we give our great, great thanks for you sharing so generously your gifts and your talents and your life and your ministry with everyone here at St. Mark's. Um, and um, we especially give thanks for your great passion, compassion, love, and, and humor. <laughs> um, so um, I hope you know how much you will be missed here. Um, and so uh, we just wish you many, many blessings for all of the many new adventures that await you in this next chapter. And um, I now turn it over to our wardens. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Father Michael, Donna. Yes. Thank you. Some of you don't know, Father Michael was for several years the long time supply priest here. And we had many, 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 many wonderful Sundays together. I want to thank you. I was going to say adventures together. <laughs> <laughs> that too. That too. I want to say, at the end of the service, there's the famous blessing, which is the Father Michael blessing, in which you encourage us to take our faith out, to have the courage to live for something and to die for something. But most of all, what he encouraged us to, us to do as we went out with our faith was to find something, and that was to find a self we could live with. And I carried that every week. And the other thing was, we were in an in-between time. We had, our rector had left, and we were in the search time. Things were in, in that time of upheaval. And here came this beautiful, beautiful family, these beautiful girls filled with talent, and joy and smiles that could light up any room. And you blessed us with them too. So I have to thank you 
for, you know, many people talk about the time when you're in between rectors and you don't have somebody as our congregation is in the wilderness. He made it an in-between time. It was the beautiful, not yet. It was anticipation. So thank you for keeping us afloat and anticipating and searching. We love you. Aww. I can't really say any more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Except that um, you both are appreciated so much. Um, we go back to St. Paul CDC. That was my first encounter with you. And then finding out that you were coming to Christ Church, Tina was kind of a happy occasion. Um, and having your beautiful daughters here with us as acolytes and just seeing the grow into beautiful young women that they are has been a joy to watch. Donna, the hours that you spent in the treasurer's <laughs> office, <laughs> nobody knows how long <laughs> you labored in there. But thank you so much for a job that not too many people are willing to do, but you did it flawlessly and beautifully. Thank you. We'll miss you so much. Can I have you guys? <laughs> Next, ah, oh, the million dollar question, what's next? <laughs> yeah. No, um, so what I was thinking, Michael, was that we um, would have Ashley and Celia come up? And Gerard. And Gerard, to, yes, to, um, <clears throat> for all of us to extend our blessings. Is that okay with you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Donna, is that okay with you, is what I should be saying. Uh, maybe not so much with them, but it's okay with me. Um, again, before we do this, this blessing, we will all offer this blessing. Um, but please, please, please join all of us um, in expressing our, our love and our gratitude. Um, in, in Carroll Hall, there's a very, very special coffee hour. So please, everybody, um, join us for that. And um, so now I, I ask that we all stand and ask everyone to extend um, your hand and blessing over this beautiful family. And let us pray. O oh God, you are the strength and the protector of your people. 
We humbly place Donna, Michael, Ashley, Celia, and Gerard in your hands as they all begin a new chapter in the lives and ministries you call each of them to. Keep and preserve them, O Lord, in all health and safety, both of body and soul. May they flourish in all the ways that, you, that they each uniquely share your light, life, and love with others. May you, O oh God, bless each and every one of them as they continue to be a blessing to your people. We ask all of this through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen. And go in the peace of Christ and know that our love and our prayers go with you. <laughs> the keys are there, I see. This is for your new home. Oh. And this is a thank you. This is from oh. the reconstituted outreach. Ah, uh, okay. But don't look for the money because. <laughs> thank, right, yeah. thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And Father Michael, would you mind yes. giving, giving your blessing? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Okay, if I forget anything, just jump in. <laughs> Go forth in Christ's name to transform existence, to bring consolation to the despairing, hope to the needy and homeless, and reconciliation to a community and world divided. In Christ's name, find a cause you can live for, a self you can live with, and a redeemer for whom you can die. And may Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
and he didn't know what to do, so I played dum 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 dum. <laughs> and he came in the grass and she said, maybe I should do this for you. <laughs> then he came in here and talked, and I was not an Episcopalian. And I said, this guy's like E.F. Hutton. When E.F. Hutton speaks, <laughs> <laughs> so I asked Donna and Father Michael what the favorite things were. And Donna said, all wind and fire. And Michael said, the third act of Aida. And I said, <laughs> so I'm going to do all of it now. I'm going to play a little thing for them. It's their two favorite things. We're going to finish with Come Spirit, come. It's the very first hymn. So you'll know on that last song where we sang, Come Spirit, come. Come Spirit, come. Come Holy Spirit. Wait. So here we go. These are their favorite hymns, and then we'll end together. I'm playing the text here. Trumpet and pipes. Loud crashing cymbals, that's what you picked. <laughs> 